All right, this is week number three of the new year and recording the podcast. After our Sundays, we just sit down and chat. And um, blessed and honored to spend time with Pastor Joey today. He's with me, and we're going to just unpack Sunday and uh, share some things from our heart. Um, Sunday, we had the opportunity to discuss the idea of lifting each other, and it really is uh, as a body of believers, unpacking how we lift each other in Jesus Christ. And so, Joey, you uh, came up, you were a part of our time together, and you, uh, man, you have a heart for discipleship, you have a heart for seeing people grow in Jesus Christ. One thing you said on Sunday, and I, I'm going to kick off just right here with this, is you said that you, as a pastor and we as a house, we believe in the priesthood of all believers. Um, let's just start with that and help people kind of understand why we want to see them grow into who they are in Christ as a, as a priesthood and not just um, sitting back but participating in the mission of the Lord. So let me hear your thoughts on this, and, and maybe you even kind of just chime in and share a little bit about yourself as you're doing that. Brother. Yeah, that'd be awesome. We're not going to do anything special for our first podcast ever recorded together in the history of <laughs> our friendship. I knew you would want to do that. Yeah. That you would want to do People don't here. care about my theology on the <laughs> priesthood of all believers. <laughs> I love they it. They want to hear embarrassing stories about we Joey Adams we, that we only We literally Micah were just knows. talking how I can get businessy and you're helping me to stay fun. <laughs> <laughs> no so, opening joke, no, no laugh. Nothing just about right that. I just try it. to go right into the business of it. Well, let me, yeah, hit me with it then. Yeah. What's the inside jokes? <laughs> <laughs> Here, why don't we do this? And then I, I definitely, because this is a great question and I think it's a good topic for us to talk about. Mm. Um, but we were joking this morning mm -hmm. about nine years of friendship. That's what we have. Yeah. Nine years. And you said, I haven't been friends with people from high school yeah. for nine years. Yeah. So here's, tell me, here's what I want to know. And here's what everyone wants to know. And then I'll say, <laughs> everyone wants you. to know this. Yeah. <laughs> They've been asking. I've been sure. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> is, and I'll, I'll say it of you. So you say it of me first. Then, then I'll say it. Then we'll go into it. Okay. What is the biggest change from Joey nine years ago to Joey today recording this podcast with you? <laughs> the pace at which you talk. Okay. That, <laughs> no, I <laughs> cheated. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's another inside joke. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, That's so funny. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things that I've watched and witnessed as your friend. One, you don't wear basketball shorts all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> two, you you definitely are more aware of your surroundings. Before, you were so aloof and not present that you didn't even know what was happening. You were in your own little world. Um, yeah, I, I, I think those are a couple of the things after 10 years watching you grow. But, man, Joey, in t listen, this is what surprised me. So much has happened. Right. You, gra I was at your graduation for your bachelor's degree. Yep. You've graduated with a master's degree since that. You got married to your beautiful wife. You've had a daughter. You got a house. You're a totally <laughs> new person just in responsibility alone that <laughs> changes who you are. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would say that, man, it's been a... It's a blessing to watch the That's Joey awesome. of year one. Intern Joey and discipleship pastor Joey are two different guys. Yeah, intern Joey is way more fun. I will say <laughs> you were way more fun. Yeah. Um, okay, my this is what, you know, so so you're the lead pastor of Lift Church, and people know you as a great speaker. Your number one skill is, is your passion that you bring. Hmm. And I've said this uh, at my Lift moments and in private moments, because people always ask like the difference between us as speakers. Mm -hmm. And I say every time that Micah preaches, I, I could run through a brick wall. Like he has like the fire that sparks up is just so evident. Mm -hmm. It's just so evident that you're so passionate about it. And it, it makes everyone else passionate. Um, and that's all fine. But you know, they want to know what was Micah like mm -hmm. nine years ago? He's in shape nine years ago. He was. <laughs> Less stressed. My Less beard wasn't stressed. white. <laughs> it wasn't as white, but it was a good beard. Um I, I was thinking about that question, too, because you had brought it up for me. And obviously, life change, not as maybe dramatic because I was 
22 mm-hmm. versus 33 or whatever it was. Um, but what I have seen, I would say this, is not so much change maybe as I've seen things that you've said nine, seven years ago mm-hmm. come to fruition. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Like you would say things and, and theory's fine, mm-hmm. but then to watch someone live it out. Mm-hmm. And I don't even mean like in a church way. I mean like watching you and Megan go through foster mm-hmm. and your heart for kids. And you would talk about like when you first started here, right? Mm-hmm. Like you worked in youth ministry mm-hmm. and with kids. Like, and I get it, you, you know, that was kind of what you did, but your heart was there to some extent. Like you and Megan are great mm-hmm. with teenagers, young children, and kids because you live it all the time. Yeah. And but you would say things, and then all of a sudden you stepped into these roles that no one, I think, forced you to. Mm. You know, I don't, I don't think anyone said, "Hey, you have to get into foster ministry." My wife did. <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah, she but, absolutely did. But you know what I'm saying. And then her, no yeah. one else, yeah. went through the like. So to watch yeah. you guys in your heart, not just speak well and be passionate. That's great. A lot of people can be passionate, but to watch you follow through mm. on your passion because passion's like such a short-term word, isn't it? Mm. Like you can be passionate about something for a short while. Mm. But if that passion doesn't turn into a a love that surpasses passion, it'll pass. Yeah. And so to watch you have passion that transforms into a love that transforms into a lifestyle. I've watched develop. Mm. And I think that is, that's just really cool because a lot of people I see are passionate and, you know, uh, and then a couple weeks later they fade out and whatever it might be. And that is not you, my friend. You, you may have gone left and right, but you've never swerved totally off the path. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm honestly, I'm, I'm honored. Um, well, I value your voice in my life and always have. And, but, one of the things, and I, I think this is of most people, the people you look up to most are the people that maybe their names aren't written down in some kind of um, monument or statue, but they've been consistent their mm-hmm. whole life. Those are the people I admire. And so to hear that there's a, at least a hint of consistency in my um, living out what I preach. Yes. Um, that's... You know, that's an honor to hear from you and, and, you know, value it. And I I do think that, you know, my wife is a great anchor in those things and the Lord has been so gracious and all of us from time to time go left and right. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah, So good. Um, So let's get back to your question. That's the fun part. That's that's what people want to see. This is fun, too. It was fun. (laughs) Um, But we do uh, at Lift Church. Um, It's, again, you want to talk about something you preach but is also a lifestyle, something you live out maybe is the theme we're kind of finding already, Hmm. Um, is we believe that everybody was created in the image of God for a purpose. And I know that sounds vague, and it's vague on purpose, because we're not here to tell you what that purpose is. I'm simply here to remind you that you are gifted by God. You're created by God. You're loved by God. You're known by God. Mm. But not just to simply, you know, do nothing. Yeah. You are called first and foremost to relax in God and rest and, and understand there's a fullness in that. Um, but you are are called to do something. Yeah. And so, again, the irony is we were having this conversation. I don't want anybody to find their value in the doing. Yep. You are valued first and foremost because you're created in the image of God. That's right. That's good. Um, but let's make it this way just to be very clear for people. I guess what we're trying to say is ministry is not for the select. Mm. Is that a better? That's, that's a, probably a better way to, to put it. Yep. Ministry is not just for the select or, you know, uh, these people that God showed up to and they had this vision of how they should do ministry and they were called into something and they stepped into it. No, no, no. That gifting, Mm -hmm. the gifting uh, of the church in general is for everybody. So we don't believe it's just for paid staff members. We don't believe it's just for the select, the the good looking, the good speakers, the charismatic, you know what I'm saying? The ones that you would look at and go, oh, 
they're evidently gifted by the Holy Spirit. They're gifted to do something. And we know people in certain realms of whether it's finance or church leadership or basketball mm-hmm. or, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. anything who are clearly the gifted ones. And you're like, yeah, that's, you know, they have the stories where I knew I would be a salesman when I was eight years old, and I've just always known that. Mm. Well, I want to speak to the people who don't know, mm-hmm. who have lived for a while going, am I even called to do anything? Yeah. Am I gifted in any way? My heart goes out to those. And I want to speak to you right now and say very clearly again and again, you are gifted and called mm. by God to do something. Amen. And, and, and I want you to feel seen and known by God. Because what happens is this, more than what you do, I have found that people who struggle with, am I, am I called by God? Am, am I gifted by God? They're actually speaking to a deeper issue. And that is an, an issue that every human on the face of the earth wants, and that is to be seen. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to be seen. Yes. And I want anyone who listens to this to know that God sees you. Amen. God knows you. And that is powerful in yeah. and of itself, right? Because yeah. it means this. It means that God not only sees you and knows you, but he's equipped you, he's called you, and he's doing a great thing in your life. Mm. And I think what we need to do is more than define the priesthood of all believers, because we're, we're probably preaching to the choir in a lot of it. Yeah. Um, you know, there's those that are listening that go, oh, I maybe I am part of the priesthood of all believers. Yeah. But knowing the people of Lift Church, the people who are more likely to hear this, probably already see themselves as the priesthood of all believers. Mm-hmm. They just don't know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They would probably agree that ministry isn't just for staff members only, mm-hmm. but they're asking themselves now, what do we do with that? And, you know, I'll hand it off to you because I've been speaking for a while, then you come back to me. But maybe my question to you is in, in conversation mode. Mm-hmm. If, I, if I'm if i on board with, with the priesthood of all believers, if I agree, hey, Joey, I, yeah, I believe I'm seen and, mm-hmm. you know, gifted by God, but I, you know, work a full-time job. Mm-hmm. I have a family. Um, what does it mean for me to even be gifted and called by God? Does that mean I have to step into, does it mean I have to preach? Mm. Does it mean I have to quit my job? Uh, And so, Micah, my friend, what would be your, like, number one, not advice, but just encouragement, or if someone was in the room right now with us, and they went, okay, I believe that I'm Mm -hmm. I'm called by God, I'm gifted by God, Um, but again, I have all these things in my life, I don't know what to do with that. I don't know what to do with that truth in the priest of all believers. Yeah. So, so much wisdom there. I w- my heart, as I was just listening to you and praying and thinking and, and really just receiving what you're saying, I a heart that loves the Lord is a heart that the Lord can use. And it, we don't need to define how he uses it as much as, and we do, like you even were categorizing it. It's just such a default mechanism for right. us as humankind to categorize what being used means. Mm. And just in general, living as a disciple is, I, I'm not a disciple for the Lord only when I'm a disciple for the Lord at all times. That is so good. And and I think that the priest of all believers is that, is that the priesthood is not bound to the temple. We are the temple now. And there is this movement of priesthood and temple into every er, <clears throat> excuse me, every area of society that we're encountering. Mm. And so the mom who is loving her children and nurturing her family is doing ministry. Amen. Yeah. Because the Lord's in it. It's not just us doing tasks anymore or living our life, whatever it, you know, giftings we have in that. We're actually, because the Lord is in us, imparting ministry in every moment. And so the, the categorization of ministry, in my opinion, when you look at the priesthood of all believers, completely shatters that to say, I am, I'm in ministry as soon as I'm awake. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm <clears throat> because you are ministering to the Lord as soon as you start your devotions. Yeah, you're ministering to the Lord as you pray unto Him and seek Him, and 
I'm ministering to, um, and, and this is our lifting each other, I'm ministering to my brothers and sisters when I'm praying in a church service over them, or I go and I visit uh, a congregant in the hospital. Mm. Um, but then also when I'm um, you know, interacting at the grocery store with someone and, and opening the door for a lady, yeah. like there is a... Uh, for me, at every single breath, I'm starting to now live under the lordship of Jesus in such a manner that the ministry of Jesus is happening through me at every moment. Mm. And so I think coming back around, my, my heart would be to say to you, we've been talking about you know, the priesthood of all believers. We're all called to grow in our discipleship, that we start to minister. And I start to think through... You know, this week we're really emphasized looking at how do we do that together as believers? Because then we look at, you know, next week we're going to be chatting, and I'm really excited about how we do that to our broader community. For those that don't consider themselves believers, how are we ministering to them? But right now we're talking about for fellow believers, for inside the house, how are we growing in faith together? How am I standing with you when you're sad? How am I rejoicing with you when you're on the mountaintop? And so my question kind of for you as as a pastor in this house, someone who loves these things and I've watched it just kind of uh, pour out of you as my friend, how would you say we lift each other mm. in as, as a uh, group or a body of believers? Yeah. What does that look like to you? Um, real quick, sure. to your point, um, I wanted to, to share something. I believe this came up in, in my mind as you were preaching on Sunday, um, but it's also kind of one of those things that I'm going to get better at mm. is when we have these podcasts, we talk mm-hmm. about priesthood of all believers or things, and, and we like never mention the Bible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but this came to mind. I thought it was so important for us to yeah. hear today, and I just looked it up uh, to double check. But it's the it's the story of the Good Samaritan. Mm-hmm. And and so in Luke chapter 10, you'll find this, this narrative. And the the original opening is the lawyer asks, who is my neighbor? And by the time we get done, you've, you've probably heard the story before, Jesus never answers the question. Mm. Jesus doesn't say, that's your neighbor. He doesn't, the lawyer says, who is my neighbor? And Jesus's end of the whole story is, go and do. Mm. And there's almost this, this uh, you know, book ending to the story where we go, okay, mm. who, who do I help? Mm. Who is my neighbor? And Jesus almost isn't concerned with that question. He simply says, do. So good. That's all you need to focus on is the serving. It doesn't matter who you're doing it to. You know what I'm saying? Now, he would, like, we look at the least of these. We look at the widow, the orphan, the hurting, you know, the sick, Mm -hmm. and we're going to go serve them. But I just love that thought process. So in this this talk about how do we lift one another up, Mm -hmm. in this idea of who is my neighbor, it, it, Jesus, like, I feel like if we were sitting here and, and we said, okay, Jesus, uh, we believe in serving one another, who do I serve? He would almost be like, that's an odd question. Yeah. Go and serve. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Does so that make good. sense what I'm trying to say? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I just to interject, you talk in scripture, and my yeah. mind immediately went to that we talked on Sunday about John 13, where he's washing feet. Yes. And it says, I just want to read it to you because it's just hitting right where you're at. It says, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. But he goes on, he says, I have set you an example that you should do yes. as I have done for you. That so there is good. this doing that, it, it's not theory, I've shown you the mm. practice, now go and practice it. And it's not a defining it's as much as it is a living. Right. You know, like, well, is this the right person to serve? That's so it is interesting. It yeah. is how my brain works is I'm like, man, when this podcast is done, I need to go up and see how many times Jesus said, now go and do. Go and do. Yeah. Yeah. That's and when, what it for came after. Yeah. yeah. Whether it was a question someone asked or an example he was setting. Mm. And then he said, go and do. Um, because this, our, our relationship with God, you know, the greatest commandment is this love God and love others. Yeah. It was never meant to be one way. Because if we're loving God, we're also loving his image here on earth. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at you, I don't look at you as just Micah. I look at you as Micah, who's made in the image of God. And so what I'm trying to get at is the priesthood of all believers really takes another level or another step when you don't just recognize that for yourself, Mm -hmm. but you recognize it for everyone around you. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? Yes. That if I'm involved in the priesthood of all believers, so is Micah. Mm. So is Justin. So is yeah. Ben. So is uh, a Jen Wood who reads yes. on our clubhouse. Up. So, so is a man. Glenn and a Jenny and a Noah Wood who's, you know, just a, a teenager. But he's involved in the priesthood. We're yeah. all involved in the priesthood of all believers. So that it not only changes the way you look at one another, Amen. but it changes the way you behave around one another. Wow. Because I, I believe this how you treat somebody you can see mm -hmm. is a reflection of how you're probably treating God whom you can't see. Yes. You know what so, I'm saying? That's scriptural. I know. That's yes. Yeah, I was trying to get there like without <laughs> even... And so um, I, all around the point, treating each other is, is well and, and how Jesus would treat each other is not just something that we're like, okay, I, I want to live this way because it's, it's you know, the right thing to do or what I've been taught. It's the right thing to do because you were made in the image of God, and so were they. Yeah. And how you treat them is a reflection of how you're probably interacting with God. So um, you begin to see the the surface mm -hmm. bubble of how people are in their private lives. Mm -hmm. You know why your private life doesn't matter? Like, I don't need to know your private life. Okay. That's between you and God. Okay. You know why I don't really need to know that? Because mm -hmm. I'll probably see it played out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't need to to ask about what's going on because if you're not praying, it's going to show up. Amen. If you're not fasting, it's going to show up. Mm -hmm. And if you are, do you know how it shows up? Mm. You lift one another up. Yeah. You serve one another. Yeah. You love one another. So that's wow. all sort of the background to what wow. we're talking about. So how do so we? Good. I know I, I, I get more caught up in that than the how. The practicals are important, and we do things here at Lift yeah. Church specifically to help facilitate. Sure. Um, and that's that word help facilitate, that's probably been on my mind more over the past couple months because I really, I'll tell you this, I'll be, uh, I'll be very honest. <laughs> I kind of was like, you need to figure it out. Yeah. Even as, you know, a leader at Lift Church, I was like, <laughs> just do it. Yeah. I don't know why you, you would yeah. need me to, to mm. tell you how. Yeah. Read your Bible, pray, worship, and let the Holy Spirit work and do it. Mm-hmm. And what I found is that's not good pastoring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm glad you learned that. <laughs> well, it's kind of like with kids. I can tell my kid, yeah. hey, don't do this, go figure that out. But yep. then there are times you, you kind of help them along. Uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, some are, uh, you know, not always better yep. left to themselves. So what, what I found is, okay, um, the mindset's not bad but it's, it's wrong, if that makes sense. Mm. So my job isn't to force it, there you go. but is to fill us, facilitate arenas for it, if that makes sense, Yeah. platforms for it. Yeah. So it's one thing in leadership for me to go, hey, um, you should rise to a leadership level. Mm. It's another for me to create platforms for them to yeah. rise up to leadership level. I can't force you to take the step, yeah. but I can at least give you platforms and language the other thing I've learned is, and this is hard, you know, when you've gone through school and, and studied, and, and anyone who's been in ministry a long time, you just have done things or know things you expect others to know. Mm. And it's just human nature, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. You have to remind yourself yeah. they need help. And that's pastoring. Pastoring is is really trying to be um, a... Okay, you'll see why I hesitated. Jesus is the, you know, incarnate. God, right? Mm -hmm. God came to humanity and met them. Mm -hmm. There are incarnational practices that we have in our lives. Does that make sense? I'm, so okay. I'm not trying to compare us to Jesus. I'm trying to say yeah. incarnational practices where we meet people where they're at That's good. and then lead them. Yeah. That has been a process, a learning process and leadership in general. But for all the priests and believers, like mm -hmm. you need to, everyone needs to know this. As you disciple and grow, you need to have that same mentality for people coming after you. You yeah. need to meet them where they're at. Yeah. I don't want us to ever get to a level and then put burdens on people that we never had in the first yeah. place. Yeah, so You know what good. I'm saying? So the point I'm trying to get at is this. Um, I have learned recently that I believe in the priesthood of all believers, but because of what I do and my role as the discipleship pastor, um, my job is not to force you to take certain steps in discipleship, but it is to knock down mountains that might be in the way that are unnecessary. Yep. Does that make sense? So good. To facilitate rooms and, and arenas or areas 
where discipleship can occur. I mm. cannot force discipleship. And that's back to my first point. Yeah. You have to take some steps. Yep. You have to, I can't force you to read the Bible, but I can get you a Bible. Oh, that's okay. So that's I'm great. talking out loud. That's, that's exactly great. what I'm talking about. Yep. I can't force you to read the Bible, yep. but I can get you a Bible. Mm. Okay. That's, I, I think that's, that just came to me just now. So yeah, it's a great example. Yes. It's, uh, it's that simple yep. of, of your heart. And that's what I want people as they're, they're hearing you. More important than all of those practicals and the practices of is the heart behind mm. it all. And, and your heart is always overflowing with this idea, I'm not trying to burden. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to give pathways for people to move forward. And then our heart is, and it's similar to what I was trying to show on Sunday with the whole weight and the rope thing, was like, is meeting people where they are, yes. is this proximity? So I want to get near to you, not stay at a distance and, and empathize mm. and understand, and the weight was a representation of whatever weight they're lifting and dealing with, that I want to help lift that up. And sometimes it's as simple as giving you a Bible. It's as maybe that's a way to lift you or give you an opportunity to move up. Um, but if, you know, we're not going to force that, mm -hmm. you know, that that's uh, legalistic and religious and, and judgmental and all these things that are not the heart behind the way that we view discipleship and we view being a body of believers. But we, we'd we still be amiss if I didn't hand you the Bible. Yes. And to your point, I'm, I'm getting to the practicals. Yes. I, I am getting there. Yeah. And it would be so funny if, like, on the podcast you're like, if you want to get to the whole point of this thing, skip to 30 minutes in or whatever yeah. we're at. <laughs> no, uh, I, I, but, yes, I, I really, I'm getting there. I, just so you know, and, and we know, you, we, you and I have been talking about this, Holy Spirit leads our conversations. We pray yes. we're, He's in all of these things. And so there's, there's something He's extracting from us right now. We believe that and leading and guiding this. And so the practicals matter. I get that, especially you know in in our day to day and helping them and guiding them. But more important, and I think the podcast has been uh, kind of a a medium for us to make sure heart is heard. Yes, uh, from us as leadership, that we can't sit down with everyone and and have these conversations, but they can sit and hear a Joey and a Micah talking about our heart for seeing people uh, grow in the Lord. And, yes, and that's kind of yeah. There's no script here. No. We literally just left another conversation, yes. came into this room, hit record. And so if you were sitting, you know, on the couch in the room or a fly on the wall, this is what you would hear. Yes. This conversation. And I think that is so important for people to hear. Mm -hmm. They don't get it all the time. Um, so let's let's talk about okay. practicals at sure. Lift Church. So that's our heart behind it. And I I I get really excited and you do as well, just oh, yeah. to to talk about that kind of stuff. And things come to us like when the Holy Spirit really orchestrates. I have I have moments like you literally will hear live like this <laughs> Holy Spirit be like, yeah, that's it. Like yeah. simultaneous to the pod. It's yeah. very cool. Your it's face cool. lights up yeah. when you're like, oh, like this revelation <laughs> happens for you. It's like the light bulb goes off over your head. <laughs> I like leave the I just <laughs> put my like, headphones down and leave. And uh, Micah just has to finish it up. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> um, so let me, let, let's get very practical then. Okay, so we're at the priesthood of all believers. And one of the things we have to ask ourselves is, how do we lift each other up? Which is really living out the priesthood of all believers, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, the first thing is this. So that word priest, I think, is very important just to, to have in our minds. It's, and when I say practical, this is practical. This is might sound like heart, but it's, it's practical as can be. You, first and foremost are an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And in order for you to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ, you have to have a, an encounter with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I was going to say daily encounter. I didn't. I, I might word it differently moving forward. But um, if you're not actively uh, engaged in the things of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. you cannot be uh, an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Awesome. And so I know that sounds like heart, but I think it's practical. Yes. Is that in order for us to lift one another up, you do have to love God, and that means a plethora of things, yes. right? You have to be involved in worship, prayer, fasting, the, the spiritual disciplines, because you, not because you're forced to, but because when you genuinely have a, a heart, the Holy Spirit will burn, this love begins to pour out, yes. and you want to. So good. This transformation occurs. And so, um, first and foremost, having an encounter with Jesus Christ is, is fundamental. If we want to talk about lifting one another up, all the time. So then we go, okay, um, you know, 
want to have this encounter with Jesus Christ that comes comes through a plethora of ways, worship the word, fasting, prayer, different things. Um, and then we go, okay, what has God called Lift Church to do? How do we lift one another up? Mm-hmm. And you have to, in order to lift one another up, have to have some sort of relationship with one another. There you go. This was your example from the sermon. And yeah. if you guys haven't seen the sermon, please go check it out. But it's Micah talking about from a distance, it's very hard to lift up a weight. Mm-hmm. You have to get close to it. Yeah. So you have to be in relationship with one another. Yes. Okay, so see how my brain works. How do we get in relationship with one another? Mm-hmm. Now we go, okay, now we're facilitating arenas or rooms or areas for relationship to occur. Yes. So I want you to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. Uh, I want you to love God, and then I want you to love others. This is how that happens. Um, a few ways. Okay. So let me work backwards, okay. because I don't like the hierarchy model of yeah. church, and yeah. sometimes I'll say things, and based on the order that I say them, you'll assume it's a hierarchy. Yeah, or a numbered process. Yes, and yeah. it's not that. It's Number one's most fluid. important. Yeah. Number 10 is least important, and I don't mean for it to be that way yeah. at all. So let me start. If, by the way, now they're like, well, now I know 10. <laughs> like, so 10 is yeah. the most important now. No. Um, this is in no order. No scale. No scale, yeah. no order. Is Let me start here. Serve teams and small groups. Serve teams and small groups are so important to the blood flow of Lift Church because I really think that is where intimate discipleship occurs. And what I love is you might naturally go, yeah, discipleship happens in small groups. Mm. But we're the 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 tilt, the the little turn of the ship is that discipleship is actually happening in serve teams. You don't uh, you know, volunteer or sign up for the greeting ministry just to fill a role at Lift Church, mm. just to show up on a Sunday and do a job. No. The greeting ministry is a discipleship ministry. Discipleship happens. Yep. Within the greeting ministry, you're going to build relationship with people, you're going to love God together, and you're going to love each other. Does that make sense? That's so good. So the same way, I shared a story on Sunday about a small group. And by the way, I've been given permission. Uh, they came up to me after, and they said, you can say. So Wonderful. it was Cheryl Steen. Yes. Uh, Cheryl Steen gets in an accident and doesn't call anybody on staff, but calls, talking about the priesthood of all believer, who's your neighbor, mm. calls Melissa Buckskin. Yep. Melissa shows up and for an hour sits with Cheryl on the road and waits for cars to show up, waits for Dennis to show up. Dennis Dean's her husband. And sits there, and and Cheryl's like, you can go. like everything's." And she said, no, I'm going to stay with you. That's the phrase. That's the phrase. I'm going to stay Stay with with you. you. I'm with you. And so stays with her. They get it all sorted out. Seems like, yeah, very cool. No, it's it's vital. Mm. It's it's more than just a, a cool story or something you should throw to the side. It's how relationships should work yes. at a church. Yes. And this is why, you know, no matter how big a church gets, if you lose this, you lose something that, you know, I'd go into a conversation about more than say it on a podcast. But <laughs> um, that's what we desire. Mm-hmm. When we talk about lifting one another up, and, and I can't give the exact practicals mm-hmm. or the exact ways to do it, I can give the arenas to do it. I can give the stories behind how it's played out. Yep. Um, so that's one. So serve teams and small groups mm-hmm. are ways that you can get involved and you can begin to lift one another up in those areas. The other thing is we have what we call ramps to relationship. Mm-hmm. I call these the big ponds. So if serve teams and small groups are, are small ponds, and by small I mean intimate, then we have big ponds that are less intimate. Um, yeah. We have things like Bloom, which is our women's ministry, so when I say, and I'm, I'm just be trying to be very specific, when I say they're less in, intimate, they're bigger, they might have 100, 200 people at a Bloom event. Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like, you can interact, but we're not going to have depth of dialogue yes. like you're going to have in the smaller ponds. Exactly. Yeah. So you're going to come, <laughs> and you're going to, you know, interact slightly. Not a lot's really asked of you. Yeah. You can come participate. Yeah. But it shouldn't just end there. You should not stay a participant. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's a great way it of saying should, it. That's why we call them ramps to relationship, yeah. is I can create the arena for you to come in. I can't force it, but our telos, our end game, our, if you want, I'll just put our cards on the table. Mm-hmm. What we would like is for you to develop relationship with people in the room and that more intimately you can continue to do life together. Yep. Does that make sense? 100%. So we have Bloom, which are our women's ministry, Forge, our men's ministry, 
uh, Wednesday night Bible study, which, man, I'm already thinking, like, we might have to have two Wednesday night Bible studies. <laughs> like, uh, I was a, thinking what a about... Good problem to have. Yeah, I was thinking about, like, Bloom and Forge, though, and um, I think, like, our consistently over the past couple of weeks, it's been about 55, wow. 50 to 55 That's people. Long, yeah. And... Uh, it's it's full in the activities room. Wow. So the big pond is like the the water's outgrowing the dimensions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> still a big the bank. Yeah. Huh? yeah, so we'll, we'll see. But yeah. um those are big you can come into those and if you want you can talk about the marriage thing as well because we talked about that being a big like mm-hmm. when you come and you're a married couple mm-hmm. um it seems like when I say that's actually a cool mix because it's sort of that big pond you can go into but it's intimate that mm-hmm. you're not like opening up in front of everybody else. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. So that might be a separate thing that we need to talk about and yeah, yeah. clarify for the congregation. Like, what does that mean? Yep. Um, but to make it very simple, I think people understand when I say, you know, women's ministry events bloom, mm-hmm. men's ministry events forged, or a Wednesday night Bible study, they're big ponds. You can mm-hmm. come in, be a fly on the wall, but we want you to meet people. Mm-hmm. Don't just continue to be a participant. Yep. Um, then we have things like my lift, my connect in my place. Yep. So my lift, my connect in my place happen the second, third, and fourth Sunday of every month, 12 times a year. My lift is come here about lift church. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about being a fly on the wall. That's like the easiest fly on the wall yep. position you can be. You don't have to talk at all. It's like step one. Yeah. If you don't do that, you don't want to get involved. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, that's fine. You yeah. don't want to get yeah, involved. If you, okay, if this, you, <laughs> this is a great step. Yes. <laughs> it's the least required of you yeah. uh, in the room. So then you have My Connect, which is more intimate. Mm-hmm. It is, you know, My Lift was here about Lift Church. My Connect is we want to hear about you. Yeah. So you're going to be in a house situation yeah. where you are going to share yeah. and other people are going to share. And here's a great thing. It's probably the first time for a lot of you Yeah. sharing like that. Yeah. So there's that. And then we have My Place. My place is the bridge between I'm getting to know Lift Church and I'm involved in Lift Church. Mm -hmm. So again, I can't force you, and this was learning as a pastor, but I can create the room, the arena, or the area where you come into the hub and I at least show you incarnationally. Like I want to meet you where you're at. Mm -hmm. What's the easiest way that I can show you how to get involved at Lift Church? Mm -hmm. That is is the heart behind my place, yeah. is I want to meet... I, I do think sometimes we're Gnostics without trying to be Gnostics. Mm. And what I mean is there's a temptation in all of us to have it and then wait for people to search after it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I've got it. Yeah. And if you want it, you're going to have to maneuver and come through here. What I found about pastoring is, is I'm going to skip all the maneuvering. I'm going to come right to you. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we have website. Yep. We want to make it as easy as possible yeah. for people to find out what's happening at Lift Church. Yeah. We have my place. If if you miss the website, you can come to my place. You know what I'm saying? We're doing what we can, and I think we're moving as a church in the right direction of making it as simple as possible for you to understand. We're not trying to overcomplicate it. We're not trying to get you to play a guessing game. We're not trying to to make it where you have to figure out a code. <laughs> we, if people could hear our hearts, yeah. We really are an open book. Yes. Like, come ask if you don't know, but we're going to try and make it as simple as possible. And it really does. When people go, well, I didn't know this was happening. Part of us, you know, can sometimes go, well, I've said it a hundred times. Mm-hmm. And we do that as pastors all the time, right? You could say it a hundred <laughs> times. Way, yeah. People are still, but they still belong to Lift Church. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They still, you know, God has still called us to pastor the people who have missed it a hundred times. You know why? Because I've missed it a hundred times. Yeah. I've messed up. I've I, I haven't been paying attention in meetings, and I've done things. And my heart goes out to. I love the people that jump on board right away, and they're like five stars, and they're involved in, in early everything. adopters. Yeah. yeah, they're just like, okay, this is awesome. I know everything going on. They know more than me. Yeah. Um, though they're you know, th- if we're being honest with one another, yeah, that's easy to pass. If everyone yeah. was like that, well, sure. Yeah, it would be yeah. like cake. But yeah. humans aren't. And guess what? The person that's missed it a hundred times yeah. still created in the image of God. So well, you know, uh, Joey. Joe, there's a thousand people in the room, but you know, hypothetically, let's use and, and just say there's a thousand life situations, mm-hmm. thousand personalities, you know. And so the mom that's trying to, my wife, I'll use her as example, trying to get seven kids to and from 
different thing. You can say it a hundred times. She still might miss it yes. 150 times. You yep. know, it's because there's so many other variables. And so slowing down and understanding and doing our best in that, I think it's grace for them and grace in return for us that we're trying as well mm-hmm. to see all of us yes. enter into these ramps that you're speaking of. And, and not, so, yeah, I, I think that you're, we are moving in the right direction Yes, to be better at that. I agree. Um, I had a scripture. I want to read this just because it was resonating with me before we kind of kind of conclude for today. Perfect. And um, but in I'm a church planter originally, and we talk about all these different uh, frameworks for how we're going to um, create something that's going to minister to people and and uh, help people to grow in their priesthood and their discipleship and so on and. Uh, a text that they would go to all the time would be Acts chapter 2. And I've, I've never viewed it as um, prescriptive as much as it was descriptive mm. of what was happening. Uh, but I, I find value in it and just because it was reading like you were talking. Mm. Because you said, cool. the text was saying, verse 42 says, they devoted, this is the New Testament church, um, after the Pentecost saying, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the so this is the the apostles they devoted themselves to the gospels of what happened through Jesus Christ mm-hmm. and to fellowship which was being near in relationship and having things in common but then it goes to the breaking of bread and to prayer mm-hmm. and then it goes on to say everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles all the believers were together and they, I just, when you read that, that's it's powerful. Now, mm-hmm. again, our day and age living these things out together is different than together then, but uh, it says, and they had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And then the last uh, kind of portion of this section of Scripture says, and the Lord added to their number daily mm. those who were being saved. Yeah. It was just a the fellowship and the intentional endeavor to see each other lifted up. Mm-hmm. Um, no one gets that perfect because uh, it's, it's, we're, we're human. We have our moments. And, um, but starting with Jesus... And then doing our best to live in him, like you said, every day kind of pursuing him and then out of the overflow of that, trying to love God, love each other now, um, you start to see what I, I sense in that text. Mm. I try to put my mind right into that does, moment. There's a little bit of like joy, like something mm. like almost pure and innocent and joyful when you read that text. Because I do feel like we live in a society that wants it, but can't live it out. Well, You know what I'm saying? I do. And and specifically, we're in the United States. Yeah. So I feel like we have a... I feel like who we are built inside, we almost desire, we crave that. Yeah. So when you read that scripture, I think it taps into who we're created to be. Mm Mm-hmm. And if we, it's, it's as simple as this, because I think people always want extremes. Yeah. So they go, I want to live countercultural. And they just like pick the most extreme thing yeah. to either avoid or not be a part of. And I think when you read that text, that's living countercultural. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Well, there's a selflessness there yes. that desires to see the Lord lifted and others lifted, which in many ways in a culture we live in, uh, which desires to live self mm-hmm. um, is is very counter. Yes, and I pray that we are a light into the world and and kind of illuminate this counter cultural kingdom mindset. Yeah, um, great so, conversation. Go ahead. Yeah, just sorry, I, but I hit on something that I have to say out loud for Please. me, if no one else. Um, but I do think we. What's the irony of the enlightenment is is everyone wants to be god in a sense yeah you want to be all knowing all powerful right and wrong ruler like that's something in us you desire to be god the irony is is that you want to be god and yet god came to mm. serve mm. and lift one another up yeah the irony is you're chasing after yeah. what jesus did wow and you're doing it the wrong way 
You know what I'm saying? Does yeah. that make sense? You're when you're so good. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it. Just sorry. Grabbing I, I, a hold of him is the way to live out that thing you're needing. That's what I'm... Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's, and that's what we point to. Redirect all. that desire into serving one another and watch what happens. Oh, my. The Lord shows up. Yep. Yeah. So powerful. Uh, great conversation, as always. I mean, and, and you and I, we could talk uh, I know. for a long time. Uh, Longer so much than was, people want. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> we're, we're trying to be consistent putting yes. in these conversations out because we want people to hear our heart if they so desire to listen. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's that again, we're not forcing it. We're just putting it out there you know, exactly. for people to lean into who we are. Would you do me a favor? Would you just pray yeah. and kind of close out our time together yeah. today, bro? Of course. Lord, first and foremost, thank you. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for loving us and, and watching us, you know, crawl and learn to walk and cry and get fussy and, and all of that, Lord. I'm just thankful. I'm thankful that you're gracious with us. In that graciousness, let us be gracious to one another. Lord, we know we have received grace and mercy, and now, uh, like the ruler who forgave the debt, right? We've been forgiven. Now, Lord, let us forgive others. And God, as we lift one another up, uh, let us, like Micah said, be hard to offend and easy to forgive. Mm -hmm. it, ultimately, Lord, I'm, we can get wrapped up in the practicals of how to, mm -hmm. but when Jesus says do, love and forgive, and then watch the practicals play out mm -hmm. from there. So, Lord, I'm thankful. Thankful for my friend Micah. Thankful for the conversation. Anybody that hears this, Lord, I'm praying right now that you would speak encouragement into their lives, that if they're wrestling with the priesthood of all believers and they don't feel gifted or seen by you, that the Holy Spirit would right now speak into their lives and let them know that they are seen by you, that, they, that you know them, Lord. That's my prayer over people right now is first and foremost— that they would feel seen and known by you. And so, God, I pray that in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, that they would begin to feel the love that can only come from you. And so, Lord, we give you this conversation, we give you the rest of our day, and uh, we just praise, praise your mighty name. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thanks, bro. Yep.